Hello, and welcome back to the Pi Data Track of the Python Web Conference 2021. And with me now is Maxwell Ugunfunwa, who's calling live from Carmel, Indiana. And he's going to talk to us about practical AI, an introduction to how computer vision can be used with modern business models. Over to you, Maxwell. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I have a presentation today, and we'll be discussing practical AI and how we can begin to really change organizations to best leverage AI um, in the most efficient and beneficial way. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and we will kick off, guys. So uh, practical AI is a very broad term for for how AI can start to be applied into businesses. Um, you know, we're, we have a lot going on in this world as we develop new technologies, new models, new state of the art, something that can really change the way that we live our lives. And so I wanted to go ahead and find a way to best present how businesses who aren't necessarily data centric or even considering data maturity to really start having a way to begin to introduce AI um, into their businesses. Um, specifically, I'll be highlighting steps an organization can take to begin leveraging computer vision um, in a specific business process, but this can apply um, for the many realms of, of machine learning and AI. Uh, and so I guess for a few starter terms, uh, machine learning and AI are in the same world, but I like to consider machine learning to be a pattern recognition, whereas artificial intelligence involves machine learning, that pattern recognition, but also making significant decisions or multiple layers of decisions in which, you know, humans would typically do. So you take one piece of information and another, and you start to make decisions. And that's where AI can really start to be defined and kind of uh, seen. Uh, but it is still pretty vague, and we're still figuring it out as an industry. Uh, but that, that's enough on that. So who am I? Uh, so I'm the founder of Media Analytics, which is a consulting company that aids businesses in leveraging their data sources and converting those data sources into data assets. Uh, specifically, you know, we help companies really understand what is the best way to monetize their data um, via their data sources. Because believe it or not, a, a lot of the companies that are being bought right now, which are really old, are being purchased by you know, newer companies because they are sitting on a wealth of data or their data warehouses are packed full of data that can be converted into models that can now be sold as SaaS products. Um, and there's just tons of ways to actualize the benefit and the value that so many older companies have um, just because they're sitting on a wealth of data. Um, and I'll get a little bit more into that as I go through my presentation, uh, but that's kind of just what media analytics does. And uh, specifically, we try to help medium sized companies or maybe even small businesses that don't necessarily have the manpower uh, to really start, you know, data initiatives or data science initiatives, uh, just because of the time and the knowledge gap that's still kind of happening in this field. Uh, I love psychology, I create music, and I play way too much League of Legends. So let's go ahead and jump right in because I have quite a bit of information I want to share with you guys. So I titled, I titled this talk Practical AI because we're currently in a hype cycle for anything machine learning, AI, or deep learning oriented. As a result, tons of companies have signed up for services and or products without really identifying how to truly leverage AI as a technology within their organization. My goal for this talk is to outline the data science lifecycle from a data strategy viewpoint in order to encourage organizational change. However, to help narrow down our discussion, we will be focusing on the practical application of computer vision and a single business process as an example. Uh, so in order to understand how an organization can begin leveraging AI in a practical sense, uh, these are a few of the main areas that need to be heavily discussed and outlined. Um, the first one's going to be business understanding, and this can also kind of be considered to be problem identification. The next will be data identification. After that, we have process restructuring, and then from there, we have tool allocation. One thing to keep in mind is that up to 80% of AI slash machine learning solutions are wrangling and understanding your data. 
Uh, the other 20 cent is tool allocation and deployment. This is essential to keep in mind um, because as I go through my presentation, you'll see that I spend a lot of time discussing and describing what needs to happen in the business process and with the data in comparison to how to get an AI model in your business process and just begin using a tool, a vendor, or a service. And it's because to truly actualize the benefit of AI, you have to have clean data that represents your business. Um, and so data is the new oil, valuable, but if unrefined, it cannot really be used. Oil has to be changed into gas, plastic, chemicals, etc. This quote has become a gem in the media when it comes to expressing the power and insights data can provide. This quote holds weight because it's a great analogy of how to think about generating value from data. One of the biggest takeaways is that raw data and AI, they just don't mix. If you've taken no time to organize and process your data, this will more likely lead to a failure of implementation or at least an extreme hassle when it comes to being production ready. Uh, so business understanding is the first step of practical AI, and I'll go even further to say it's probably the most important step when it comes to generating valuable data insights or assets. Business understanding comprises of diagramming, outlining, or thoroughly explaining each step of a business process that we would like to use AI in, or in our case, computer vision. Um, every business process has unique needs. And in order to you know, meet a particular goal or objective, you string these needs into steps um, that you can accomplish to you know, hit your, your metric or your goal or whatever that may be. As a result, it's essential to outline these specific steps and detail those steps to best understand how you plan on implementing AI. So questions you can ask are, what is the objective of this process? What are the KPIs, the SLAs attached to this process? What are the step-by-step -step process that's currently being used to make sure you have a strong understanding of what's currently happening? Um, and then what are the roles and the teams that interact with this process? With all of this information, you should be able to outline the problem and the current process to solving that problem. I think it's very, very important that we have a good grasp on what our problem is and what is our current process for solving it. Because when you start to bring in machine learning and AI, a lot of things kind of have to change by nature of the technology. Uh, I like to think of AI as being kind of like um, a really, really small baby that you have to watch and monitor and take care of. And because of this, you have to understand all the different things that it's going to need uh, before you kind of just bring it into a situation to avoid, you know, uh, running some more issues downstream. So let's go ahead and consider how computer vision can be used to enhance a business process or an overall data source. So for example, let's say that we're an e-commerce company and we want to automatically extract metadata or AKA descriptive features from a product and use those features to upload a product to our e-commerce catalog. Typically, we have a person that manually reviews the product then enters the features of that product into our catalog. So currently our process might look something like we have a new product we want to add to our catalog. We inform our catalog uploader that we have a new item. They review the item when they can. They extract features based on their perspective. They add the product into our e-commerce platform and now the item is ready to be purchased on our storefront. This is a simplified version for example purposes, but more or less, this is our current process. With the business process outlined, we would need to go back and answer those questions regarding the problem at hand that I mentioned in our previous slide. This is essential because it will give us a solid understanding of the when, where, and how we want computer vision to come into play. But uh, more importantly, um, if a simpler solution can be identified, one thing to note is that we often think the latest technology is the best, and I don't necessarily believe this to be true. This first step, business understanding, is essentially a filter to ask if computer vision is even needed in this problem. You know, I think that because we're in this hype cycle, it's uh, very easy to kind of get carried away and to believe that, uh, you know, machine learning is just going to solve all of our problems. 
But, you know, we have many, many technologies and softwares that have been developed that are much simpler solutions to implement into a business process and might, you know, take away a lot of the hassle that um, we might get when we bring in AI. And it's not to say machine learning and AI won't bring tons of value, um, but it might not just be the simplest solution. And I like to just, you know, use the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, um, if possible. So after business understanding, we have data identification. Uh, data identification is a step that goes by many names. So we have you know, data acquisition, data processing, ETL. I don't wanna say all of these are the same, but for the most part, data identification would encapsulate them. Um, and for you know, those who might not be familiar, ETL is extract, transform, and load, uh, which is basically a process where you would take a uh, information from a data source, you would transform that information, and then you would load it into some storage so that it can be used later on, which is just a process that uh, data scientists, data engineers, data analysts use to make sure that their data is ready to be used. So the goal of this step is to identify what data is currently available to the organization regarding this particular business process. Can the data be used in its current state? And if not, can it be transformed? It is essential to identify what is the volume of data available? How much of that data is structured, i.e. labeled? Um, is it possible to create a valuable data set from the data available? Uh, and what it, what is the type of processing, if any, needs to be done to this data? During the step, I like to think, if I only had the data produced from this business process, would I be able to infer what's going on end to end? Um, and from my experiences, from my experience, typically it's very hard for businesses, unless they're extremely uh, mature with their data operations, to say that they can see a business process and their data end to end. And that's okay. That's kind of why this step is super important is so that you can say, what am I missing in my data that I would need to give my model in order to create accurate descriptions of my business process or to be able to solve a particular problem in my business process, which I want to predict for. So when it comes to creating a data set for a particular business process, it will always look different, which is kind of why I have to keep it high level uh, is because things are going to always change depending on the data or depending on the business process itself. So without getting into too much details on the specific of storage and formatting, the most important aspect is to organize the data. And for our computer vision example, that would be our images. Each image should have a label or multiple labels to help identify the information we want to extract from the data set in regards to our business process. Um, this aids us in doing multiple things. It aids us in creating a stronger relationship with the data and the organization, kind of bringing the two closer together. Um, it helps us in building a data set that can be turned into a data asset or a data product over time. Um, but most importantly, I think it really institutionalizes the knowledge within an organization of the data gathered. It really takes the knowledge from you know, our business units, our directors, our executive, the people who are really making decisions and using our data. And it helps us label our data based upon what they think they're seeing um, and what that data means to them, which is, you know, kind of going back to my example earlier, why a lot of businesses are being purchased for their data sets. Um, enriching a data with label, enriching data with labels uh, is, is such a powerful step towards monet monetizing your data, which uh, can be extremely beneficial in the long run. So let's go ahead and continue with our e-commerce example. So now that we understand our business process and the steps involved, our next goal is to understand if we have any data previously available. Uh, in this example, due to the nature of the business being an e-commerce business, most of the products slash images have been uh, labeled with metadata associated to them already. However, they may not be organized or centralized. The first step would be to export all the products and their images into a CSV folder structure that will preserve the relationship between the data, the images, and the detail slash metadata describing those products. 
Um, this gives us a great starting point to begin reviewing our data set, you know, seeing it in just one place and to see if we have enough labels for our product or our business process um, and how many images we may have available for each product and label category. From a technology standpoint, there are many tools that can help us achieve, you know, the organization, the storage, and the relation of our labels and our images. However, at this point in the process, you know, simply having the images separated by folders or a CDN, um, if a CDN is being used, putting it, the link in a spreadsheet and having the labels, you know, be next to them could be good enough because really you just want to centralize your data at this point so you can say, okay, I have this much data for this label, this much data for that label. Maybe I have a disparate category that I need to have more data for, or I'm missing something in between. Really, you wanna be able to see your data and start really building that data set. So the core, the core process to keep in mind during data identification is how can I get my data and my labels in the same place, i.e. relational. You wanna be able to review your data in regards to how much of it has been labeled or lack thereof. This gives you the ability to reflect on your business process and see if there's any data being created somewhere else that can be collected or if adding extra data fields is going to be essential for your business process or for your computer vision model to um, be actualized and actually be efficient and provide value to the organization. So our next step is process restructuring. Um, process restructuring is the creation of a new process with the data you have available, right? Um, so while reviewing the current business process, the goal is to identify key data points that will directly affect the business process and possibly the business as a whole. This may include creating new data points as a new process unfolds. For me, this is the most fun a data scientist can have without directly creating a new model. Um, this process is essentially transforming your business process to be more data driven or more data centric. As you begin to ask your business process more questions and you identify what data you have available, you'll really be able, you'll re begin to see more uh, points of opportunity for you to collect more data. You'll begin to see that, okay, maybe this data point isn't descriptive enough, so I want to break it down. And so instead of seeing, you know, this this framework, Practical AI, as a linear process, you can start to see the process restructuring and the data identification kind of being the cycle where you're kind of going back and forth saying, okay, I've identified more data I'd like to collect, which means that I can now change my business process to include more data. And then that kind of just keeps happening until you feel uh, that you've reached a point to where I have enough data to start thinking about what my model is going to be doing, what information I want to feed it, uh, and how it can begin to best make predictions that will enhance and optimize my business process. Um, so the core thing to keep in mind when building a process that will leverage computer vision is to think about how the business metrics will be affected by bringing in a computer vision model. You'll want to refer back to the business understanding uh, step and think through the KPIs that are going to be affected, as well as how can this metadata be used to enhance the rest of the organization. Um, the really cool thing about metadata is that you'll be bringing in information um, that you necessarily weren't collecting before and might have effects on other metrics in the organization that people in accounting, marketing, anywhere else in the business can really begin to start leveraging. Uh, so outlining the effects uh, that computer vision will have is extremely beneficial for a few reasons. It makes finding a tool for deployment much easier. It makes AI and machine learning easier to explain in terms that the rest of the organization will be able to understand. Um, more ideas can be generated for different use cases um, and better descriptive terms for the data points get created. The best way to explain this process is really by example. So let's say in our e-commerce example, we have a good idea of the data that's being generated previously and how the business process works. We now need to ask ourselves questions about what exactly we want our model to be extracting from our product. So for example, let's say we have product A and you know it's a clothing top for men. For tops, we know we, that we need to extract the color of the top, 
Um, we want to know if it's short sleeve or if it's long sleeve. Uh, we want to know, is it a button down? Is it a t-shirt? Is it a sweatshirt? Is there a brand on the t-shirt? Um, we also need to consider what development work needs to be done in order to automatically take our predictions and enter them into the platform. Um, with these questions, we can go back and really start asking our data, is it labeled enough to really begin to have a, create a model or leverage a model that can help organize uh, and predict information about this particular product, which is a clothing top? Let's say that our customers are also interested in knowing whether the top is for summer or winter. Is there enough information in the image, our, our clothing top, uh, to determine this as well? Are there particular features that might highlight this? Um, these are kind of the questions that you'll want to ask yourself and make sure that you at least have labels for your data for to make sure that when you start creating a model, start really putting your data set together, that you have the information available. So from here, our requirements would just be to reframe our problem statement and outline what the problem should look like or what the process should look like when we start involving computer vision. So our previous process was something along the lines of we have a new product we want to add to our catalog. Um, we have the information sent over to our catalog uploader so that they can add that uh, that product into our catalog, you know, they review the item when they can, they extract the features uh, of the item based on their perspective, they add information into our platform, um, and now the item is ready on our storefront to be purchased. Our new process could be something like, as we have an item we want to add to our catalog, um, we upload this image now via a web app or e-commerce plugin, something that helps get it to where our model is being held so we can extract those predictions or at least get that information into our e-commerce platform. And so let's say that our prediction confidence is below 80%, which is an arbitrary threshold, which will depend on the specifics or you know, how a specific you need your model to be right um, before you, know, you accept the prediction. Let's say that it's below 80%. We send a notification via email to, let's say, our product reviewer, and we say, hey, this one's below 80%. Can you review it to see kind of what's going on? Um, and let's say that our confidence level for our prediction, you know, is above 80%. Can we just add the item directly to the catalog? Or an even or another approach that can be considered is having a human in the loop. Um, and this would simply be saying, okay, this prediction is above 80%, but we still want somebody to just give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down to just say, okay, you know, our model predicted that it's a red top. They think it's a button down. It's for the summer, for the winter. Do you agree? Do you disagree before we automate this process of adding it into our catalog, uh, which can save significant amount of time and also can help standardize the descriptions that are being added in to our catalog. Um, and so then from there, you know, just following the similar steps that we had in our previous process, the item is now available to be purchased on our storefront. So I know this is a very vague and a simplified version of exactly um, what would need to happen in each of these steps. However, it gives us a good sense of direction for exactly what will need to happen in our computer vision model um, to be able to really benefit our organization and what criteria we might wanna monitor and to ensure it's working. So that that 80% threshold, right? Uh, to be able to understand, did we get a good accuracy? Did we get a good prediction? And what does that look like? Maybe what type of item items aren't getting good predictions, um, so on and so forth. So the last step uh, to round up our practical AI framework is tool allocation. Tool allocation is basically finding the right ML slash AI implementation to use for our problem that has been defined. In our context, we've been talking about computer vision, so that really helps narrow it down, but this can also span across multiple types of machine learning, such as natural language processing, recommendation systems, even our base regression algorithms, if you're doing something uh, fairly simplistic or any type of classification, really utilizing the business process is just going to help significantly narrow down the requirements of, of what tool you're gonna to wanna to use uh, to kind of save you some time of just, you know, kind of going back and forth. 
The core goal to allocation is to find out what is the best way to bring in AI into our organization. Is it going to be a SaaS tool, a vendor tool? Is it going to be building our own model from scratch? Um, each option comes with its pros and cons. However, the other three steps, so business understanding, uh, data identification, process restructuring, uh, should really help narrow, narrow down this choice significantly. For example, if we don't have a huge data set that is labeled, building one from scratch for a production environment might not be the best step, um, as we just don't have enough structured data to create a generalized model, which is extremely important for productionized environments. Um, using a vendor can be extremely helpful, but it's also costly. So asking ourselves the question of, is the time we're gonna save by using AI worth the cost of a vendor annually? Or if the vendor route makes sense, a more beneficial question can be, how could the vendor help us with this process, but also in other ones in our organization? And, you know, kind of going through that business understanding, the hope is that we'll really start seeing other areas that, you know, this model or other machine models can truly begin to benefit, um, you know, our organization. And so we have AI SaaS model, which is, I believe, the easiest to start with. Um, and some questions can be, first, can we even find a SaaS model that works with our data type? Unfortunately um, for us, in our computer vision model, there's tons. Um, but, you know, does this SaaS have an API that we can leverage? Um, and then what is the latency of each request? You know, going back again to our, our business understanding, what are the SLAs that we're trying to reach? Um, you know, what is what are our clients or maybe our end users expecting of us? Um, and then for the APIs, you know, what are we trying to tie this back in? What decisions are we making? What type of logic are we wanting to apply? Looking at the tools from this lens of a modified of our modified business approach is extremely beneficial because it allows us to know which approach is going to be worth your time um, and which one is going to bring the most value to your process and your organization, and also which best which one best aligns with the organization's data maturity level. Um, it's it's it is very important to accept if your organization it doesn't have a high data maturity because it gives you a good place to start in comparison to you know wanting to reach the top of the data hierarchy um, pyramid which is actualizing ai when in comparison your data is not labeled yet hasn't really been organized or aligned with the other roles um, and, and this is really important because it you know these are just the steps of, of getting there um, and i think that's really important as practitioners of, of data machine learning ai that we help organizations understand that they're building blocks to leveraging this technology you can't really just jump right in without actually understanding you know where is your data today um, and then also you know how much of it is labeled uh, so on and so forth so for our e-commerce example, a vendor solution can be very practical if the amount of items that are going to be added to our catalog um, require a lot of time annually, or if the vendor solutions comes with additional e-commerce services that can provide extra value for us. We could swing a custom model from scratch, but some thought and, and research, after some thought and research, it might feel like a little bit of overkill creating a model from scratch in comparison to an AI SaaS approach um, because of a lovely concept called transfer learning. So essentially transfer learning takes a model that's trained on a fairly general data set and uses our data set or your data set to create a new model that gives predictions specific to labels in your data set. So this essentially takes a lot of the time, hassle of training a new model out of the equation and gets us to proof of value as soon as possible. For our particular use case, trying to predict uh, product details of a particular product, so you know, getting labels, making predictions for what those labels might be, there are quite a bit of AI SaaS options that we could use. Um, Clarify, which is this guy right here, um, allows users to upload a data set, label it on their platform. They then train a model for you built upon their generalized models. So essentially transfer learning. And then we can send items to that model using the API to receive production uh, predictions. And then, you know, using that a API to then automate whatever we need to do from there. We also have the big three cloud platforms, which is AWS recognition, Google Vision AI. We have Azure Computer Vision which basically allow users to create their own models based upon their models or even create models from scratch as well. 
Um, however, these options are very, very much very platform based, so they're meant to be bare bone um, and might require a bit more development. So, you know, definitely keep it in mind how much time um, and how much value you, you'll perceive you'll be able to get from this. It's something to keep in mind if you want to go with those options. I personally have used all three and I really enjoy them. Um, but just considering where, you know, the organization may be is, is something to really consider if you lean towards that option. Um, and we we also have label box, which is very similar to Clarify, because um, they give you the ability to label your data, train your data, and then deploy a model using their easy to use UI. So let's say that we've selected one of these tools. Uh, the remaining steps will be to find uh, the remaining steps are going to be very similar to your typical typical software development life cycle. You just want to make sure that you can monitor the health of your computer vision model over time for either of these tools um, that you end up selecting because data inherently changes over time, which means the model will need to be retrained periodically, which means you're going to want to watch the predictions that are coming out of it and possibly have somebody reviewing the predictions annual, not annually, but maybe you know, monthly or bi-monthly just to make sure that the model uh, isn't too far off or our threshold is actually holding up to the SLAs or KPIs in which we want it to. So as you can see, following these steps can be quite a bit demanding, uh, but bringing an AI solution can really, such as computer vision, can be extremely valuable and time-saving if done correctly and done with quite a bit of thought. Um, so my hope is with this information, you guys will be able to actualize your AI dreams and help bring your organization to be more data centric or at least more uh, data cognizant when developing and creating uh, business processes. I think AI is truly going to be a force for good as we've seen. Um, and I really, really believe that, you know, this is just a hype cycle right now, but this is the beginning of a really pivotal moment in our technological history. Um, I personally have a lot of beliefs that I'd love to share with you guys that, you know, AI is truly going to change how all of our world works, especially with the events like, you know, COVID, for example, just kind of pushing us forward more digitally than we would have done so uh, naturally. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for spending this time with me and listening to what I believe is the best way to go about introducing AI slash machine learning into your organizational business processes, specifically talking about computer vision. Um, I would like to give out a shout out to the staff for hosting this event and making it so seamless to share this information during a pandemic. Um, so I know this has been quite a bit of information to process. So as a result, I'm definitely going to be sharing my slides, but I'm also going to be uh, recording a video series where I go way more in depth on each of these steps um, in the framework to be able to explain how we can consider these steps in, in different use cases and different scenarios to kind of make it more applicable to different organizations um, that are at different maturity levels and also how it correlates directly back to the data science life cycle. Um, and lastly, here's my email on the screen. So if you guys have any questions or any great stories about how you guys have been able to bring AI into your organizations, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um, so once again, my name is Maxwell, and I thank you guys so much for listening.